so here we are at Pelican Village Bridgetown and we've come to see this magnificently green tree which is called in Barbados Jumbi Seed or Jumbi Bean Tree Jumbi Bead and here are the Jumbi Beads these bright red beads inside of a long pod and they are much larger than another bean that we are looking at on Sailor's Valentine's. They're much larger than the crab eye seed. Okay? Quite a, diff quite a contrast. Look at the sizes of the leaves. Look at the sizes of the pods. Can you imagine laying these out among the white and pink shells of the Sailor's Valentine's? And in your heart, you're thinking that the person that I give this to will be benefit from the protection of the ancestral spirits. In fact, these jumbi beads are used very much like the crab eyes and um, in some cultures they are used to decorate ceremonial masks laid out in single lines or singly as spots and in mosaics, not unlike the mosaics on the Sailor's Valentines. So perhaps the tradition of Sailor's Valentines did not pop into being from nowhere. Perhaps the tradition grew from deep roots brought here by the people who arrived from Africa and passed down through the generations and innovations and iterations of different types of art. Right? From simple bracelets, necklaces, anklets, to jewelry boxes, to sailor's valentines. Right? That very, very beautiful creation of Barbados. My name is Glenn Brathwaite. Uh, Glenn Genki Brathwit, Genki being my trade name, but textile designer. Um, textile orb is my choice. Um, in the course of trying to bring that story over about my love of textile and what textile meant to me, I worked in fashion. Never really wanted to work in fashion. It was never my thing. As, more, as much as creating textures and surface design, was to me. Well, I had known of the, of the Sailor's Valentine before. One used to be in Mrs. Mack's house, um, who would have been a St. John related to my granddad. Um, there was one there, but I never really, for, for me it was the shell craft that ladies do when they got there to do. I never figured out, it's, I never realized its importance. Um, so when, you, when I got the call from NCF regarding it and I delved a little bit more and I started asking myself some questions about it, my questions went a little bit further than whether it was a parlor craft done by ladies who had nothing to do and I realized it was much more than that. Well, because these were colored women, and I use that word loosely, uh, because these were colored women, they would have, and, and the timing was, we were just literally out of the 17th century, working into the 19th century. We would have had a lot of, of knowledge that even though it wouldn't have been widespread, um, and I'm talking about iconic knowledge, I'm talking about um, ancestral knowledge, um, numerology in, in, in numbers and, and what they meant to people. I mean, we were the first people to look at the stars and find meaning in them. And there's, you got to know some geometry to look at the stars and, and find some meaning to find some lines, some, some, some kind of passage. So I wanted to approach this 100% from an African point of view. So in my, my light catcher, which is something, a piece that I develop over time and they've gone through, they've gone through quite a few phases of their development from feng shui to um, chakras to 
basic numerology and I wanted to make that numerology, I wanted to make sure that I had been working with this numerology with some time by making every single pattern in there out of the number eight because it's the eight sides of the, the Sailor's Valentine. So I wanted to play with the numbers for that one. And in the quilt, I just wanted comfort, one. Uh, I wanted it to be utility and useful. And when we speak of the sea in African mythology, we think of Yemaya and we think of Olokun. Olokun being he who lives at the deepest part of the ocean, so holds the souls of those who died by choice, by committing suicide, coming across the passage, and those who die in the sea, yet daily, whose bodies are not retrieved. Olokun protects and holds those souls. And the surface waters are your mayas. So she gives you safe passage. She gives you, she colludes with Oya for good winds. Um, so she, in fact, to me, is the Sailor's Valentine. Well, there are five heart symbols used in the Adinkra language to speak uh, towards God as they see him and our, our relationship to God as ones who keep and nurture and supposedly nurture the earth. I selected this one on purpose because it was the most technical of the lot and there were symbols in there that could be described as being Eurocentric, but which were there year way before we dis before Eurocentricity discovered us. It has the longest name of all the names and all the Dinkra symbols. So it's Onya Kopon Ade Niti Bedebara Beye Yiye. And it means by God's grace, all will be well. Its simple meaning is hope. Right, so I chose that, that particular symbol because it had so much intensity in it. And then I died, I double died until I got it. My dying so intense that my shapes stood out more so than watered out um, in my, my octagons. But then I wanted the size to be almost wet and soft and watery, so Hence, you get this lovely wash of purples and aquas and turquoises. And the central piece, of course, is the mermaid. And I get, I'm getting all emotional about that. But I don't know, I can't help it. She's very close to me in many ways. And over, over the years, I've started creating a, a line of, of home furnishings. So I've got sheets. Um, I want to transfer this further into some other soft furnishings. Um, and that's where I would really like to take myself in the future years of myself. I almost said latter years, but that's not so cool. <laughs> in the future years of myself, I would like to produce a really wonderful home furnishings line, not only on my own, but incorporating the work of others in it. Um, Sometimes we have skills, but we don't always have that, that inner depth of pushing an idea. And I would like to work with other, other designers and other crafters to create something that's a whole, but, makes, but it's made up of lots of others. And that's how we need to start thinking. We need to start thinking, how can we help develop each other to the point that we create something so wholesome, it's unbeatable. Now, I have gone ahead and stuck down the cutout centerpiece as well as the mermaid painting. So what I'm going to do now is decorate the sides of my valentine on the blue sand. I often like to do that because it gives it a more complete, refined sort of look. Some tacky glue. And then you start sticking down the shells one at a time. So I've gone ahead now and completed the section. You can see I've done the sides and I've finished the top. 
So what you're going to do is repeat the same pattern, the same look, until all eight sides of the box are done. Now here is the Valentine now with all the NASA Persica shells all around the circumference, as you can see. I take an abalone and put it here, so here, so one edge is done and you do the same until the rest of the design. So for the next phase of making this Valentine, I'm going to stick down moss in the green sanded areas. Here we have it. There's the moss stuck down. Now for this step, I'm going to show you how I wire shell flowers. It's pretty simple. What you will need is some copper wire. Always copper because if not, it's going to rust through and your shell work is going to get damaged. And the reason why you wire flowers is to give it some depth and to give the appearance that like you're looking at an actual garden, for example. This is, but like I said in the beginning, other artists do different things. So this is my way. So I have two flowers here and I'm going to show you how I do it. So the first thing you do is you take your wire and you cut off a section and you twist the wire. Then you pull it off until you get something like this. Next then you bend it over till it's flat like this and you repeat the aforementioned step with the other end. And you apply a little bit of your Beacon 527 glue. Then you take your stem and you apply it into the glue. And then you leave it to dry. Now while the moss is sticking to the glue, I'm going to start laying down these half moon clamshells around the mermaid painting. Okay, so there we have it. All of the space with the white sand has now been filled in with these half moon shells. Okay, now we're going to get to the fun part. So for the corners, what I'm going to do is use these purple janthinas here. And for these corners here, I'm going to use these pink talons with pearls in them. And these are actual freshwater pearls. Now we get to the fun part. We're actually wiring the flowers now. So before you stick down, you can play with some floral arrangements. You can try putting different flowers in different positions. Experiment until you settle on what it is you want. So there you have it. I have one section done. And I'm going to repeat this pattern until I've covered all of the areas and any little spaces I might put in some coralized algae or other corals or other things to fill in the blanks. Okay, so there we have it. All my wired flowers have now been stuck down and arranged tastefully throughout the Valentine. I'd also gone ahead and added in some dyed tarpon scales to function as leaves and what these will do will coordinate better with the greenery around here. Okay, so in this last bit of shell work to complete this valentine, I have taken this shell here as well as some pieces of orange sea fan and these three starfish and laid them down on the centerpiece. And now we have finally come to the end. The valentine is complete, but before I seal it up behind the glass and molding strips, there's just a few more little things I need to do. So in an ensemble like this, the first thing I do is that I turn it upside down to let any tiny little loose bits come loose. So I turn it like this and gently tap it. So see there's a bit of debris here and one of the pearls fell off. So I will go and fix that back off camera. And the next thing you do, since I used a lot of glue and a lot of the cement glue, is to carefully look for any little bits of glue, any strings. And now we've come to the final part, sealing it up. So now I take my glass, which I've cleaned 
with some glass cleaner, making sure it's nice and clear. And then you start taking the glass trim or molding strips and fitting them back in one by one. And then that's your Valentine. And that concludes the end of my tutorial on how to make a sailor's Valentine. I want to thank you all for watching to the very end and I hope that you learned something about how to make this beautiful, unique Barbadian art form. I look forward to seeing the fruits of your own endeavors if you decide to take up learning this unique Barbadian art form. I am Douglas Blackburn and thank you very much for everything.